Hey, Algebra students. Today we're going to do a little more factoring. We're going to do, uh, well, we're going to do factoring uh, with uh, trinomials that don't just start with x squared, but that have a coefficient other than 1 right here. A couple more steps, but it's really still not that hard, okay? So to start, let's look at how we factored these things. Let's just have a little refresher, okay? Well, let me tell you the way that I do it. I look over here and I see x squared. If it just starts with x squared, great. That means I know that I have two factors, if I can factor it. Let me just stop and say, not every trinomial can be factored, but every trinomial that we're going to look at here can be. So I'm just going to make that assumption. So uh, I start each one with an x, and then I look at this and I say, okay, my product is going to be negative 8, and my sum is positive 2. Uh, a product of negative 8, that means I have one positive and one negative. So now what factors of 8? Let's see, there's 8 and 1, there's 4 and 2. 4 and 2, okay, got it. Because positive 4 and negative 2, if I add those together, I get positive 2. So this can be positive 4 times negative 2, and I'm done. Let's do the next one. I know I'm going fast. If I'm going too fast, you should watch the intro to factoring uh, uh, video that I made, okay? That goes a little slower than this one does. Um, Again, x squared, so I'm going to put an x here and an x here. Again, negative product, that means I have one positive, one negative. If I want to put the negative first, fine. We're multiplying here, but multiplying this times this, and when you multiply, order doesn't matter. So, uh, but let's see. I need a, a product of negative 7 and a sum of positive 6. Uh, that would be 7 times negative 1. 7 times negative 1, because 7 plus negative 1 is 6, and 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. All right, let's do another one. Uh, again, x, x, and uh, this time my product is 12, my, my sum is 8. Let's see, how do I get 8? I can do, uh, uh, no, not how I can, how can, how do I get 12? Sorry about that. Uh, I can do 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3, which of those pairs adds up to 8? Well, that would be 6 and 2. x plus 6, x plus 2. They're both positive because positive product means my signs are the same. And if it's a positive sum, that means I know they both have to be plus. So there you go. This is how you factor trinomials that start with just x squared. That is, they have a leading coefficient of 1, 1 times x squared. Now, like I said, we're going to start factoring trinomials like this. But in order to do that, let's refresh our memory of how we multiply binomials that are, that are going to be of this category. Okay, and I'm going to slow down the multiplying a lot. I'm going to go, you might go through fewer steps than I go through here. So I have 2x minus 1 times x plus 14. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this is 2x times x plus 14 minus 1 times x plus 14, okay? I'm basically just distributing the x plus 14 over my 2x minus 1. And then I would say, well, let me distribute again. 2x times x is 2x squared, and 2x times 14 is 28x, and negative 1 times x is minus x or minus 1x, and negative 1 times 14 is minus 14. And then I would combine these terms here, and I'd say 28x minus x, that's just 27x. And there's my answer there. 2x Two, uh, squared plus 27x minus 14. Now, like I said, many of y'all might just skip this first step right here. Uh, because you might, uh, you, you might remember there's a FOIL method, F-O-I-L, first, outside, inside, last. Uh, or you might, uh, uh, there are a variety of ways to multiply binomials, okay? But you might just say 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 14 is 28x. <clears throat> Excuse me. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And negative 1 times 14 is negative 14. And just go straight that way. That's fine, okay? I put this here for a reason, and I'll, you'll see what it is in just a second, okay? Because what I want to show you is, when we're factoring this, what we're going to do is, we're going to start with something like this, then go up here, then go up here, then go to that. Okay? 
So, if I'm starting with something that looks like this, the first thing I have to do is I have to split up this 27x to 28x minus x. Well, how do I know to do that? How do I know it's not 29x minus 2x, or 30x minus 3x, or 13x plus 14x? How, how do I know exactly how to split this 27x? Well, there's a trick, okay? And it's this. In all of these binomials, once you, come up, once you multiply everything times everything and you come up with these four terms here, if you notice, the, outs, the first term times the last term, 2x squared times negative 14, is always going to be the same thing as this term times this term, 28x times negative x. Both of them equal negative 28x squared. And this is true with any binomials that you multiply like this. And the reason is this is 2x times x, and this is negative uh, 1 times 14. So when you multiply this times this, what you're multiplying is this times this times this times this. Likewise, 28x, this is 2x times 14, and negative x is negative 1 times x. So when I multiply these together, I get this times this times this times this. The bottom line is the product of these two terms is the same as the product of these two terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for two numbers that have the sum of 27x and the product of 2 times negative 14, which is negative 28. Okay? And by the way, I, I said 27x. I'm, I'm usually just going to talk about the coefficients. I'm going to leave the variables out. Okay? So I want a sum of 27 and a product of negative 28. And those two numbers would be 28 and negative 1. So this might sound confusing at first, so let's go over here and apply it to this problem here, okay? So let me just draw this in green to make it more obvious what I'm doing, okay? So I have 2x squared plus 5x minus 42, and I want to figure out uh, how to factor this. So the first thing I do is I say I'm going to look for two numbers, and the sum of those two numbers, the sum is 5. The product of those two numbers is 2 times negative 42, which is negative 84. Okay? Now, again, why did I do this? Because what I want to do is I want to split up this 5x the same way that I split up the negative 27x here. All right, well, let me, let me see. Uh, 84, that's going to be 84 times 1, or 42 times 2, or 21 times 4, uh, it could be 7 times 12, got it. That's it right there, okay? Because think about it, I want, I want uh, factors of negative 84, which means all these pairs here, I want one positive, one negative, and I want them to add up to 5. Negative 7 plus positive 12 is going to be 5 and negative 7 times positive 12 is going to be negative 84, so that's what I want. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared minus 7x plus 12x minus 42, okay? So this green term has turned into these two green terms there. Now, you might be wondering, so? well. What we've done is we went, we went from this line here up to this line here. So now we're going to go from this line here up to this line here. We're going backwards. We're going from the trinomial to the factors. Okay? So you look at the first two terms that you have right here, the 2x squared minus 7x. Uh, what can I factor out of these terms? Well, out of, between 2 and 7, there are no common factors. But between x squared and x, there is an x. So this is x times x times what is 2x squared? x times 2x is 2x squared. And x times what is negative 7x? That would be negative 7. So x times 2x minus 7 is 2x squared minus 7x. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here, but remember, what I want to do is I want to move up to something that looks like this line here. What you notice is I've got this times this binomial plus this uh, coefficient times the same binomial. So this 2x minus 7, I want to repeat it. Now, what can I multiply times 2x minus 7 to get 12x minus 42? 
Well, that would be 6. 6 times 2x is 12x, and 6 times negative 7 is negative 42. And now I've gotten up to this line here, and so now all I have to do is go from this line here to that right there, and that's pretty easy. One of my factors is going to be 2x minus 7, and the other factor is going to be x plus 6. And those are my factors. Okay? Let's do another one. Let's do... I'm going to do 6x squared uh, minus 5x minus 21. Okay. And I want to factor this monster. Uh, well, let's see. My product is going to be 6 times negative 21, uh, which is, oh my goodness, is that what I want to do? Okay, that's what I want to do. Uh, 6 times negative 21, which is negative 126. Yuck. And my sum is going to be negative 5. All right. Well, let me see. Um, factors of 126. I never worry about the sign. I just remember to myself, my product needs to be negative, so that means I need one positive, one negative. So let's see. We got 126 times 1. We got 63 times 2. We got uh, 21 times 6. Uh, let's see, we could do 7 times 18. Uh, 14 times 9. Hey, got it. Uh, 14 times 9. Uh, because if I take a negative 14 and a positive 9, I get negative 14 times 9 equals negative 126 and negative 14 plus 9 equals negative 5 and those are the product and sum I was looking for. So what am I going to do? I'm going to rewrite this 6x squared and this negative 5x becomes negative 14x plus 9x. This and this are equivalent. Minus 21. Then what do we do? We look at the first two terms just like we did over here. Look at the first two terms, and what can I factor out of this? Well, 6 and 14 are both divisible by 2, so I'll factor out a 2. And x squared and x are divisible by x, so I'm going to factor out an x. 2x times what is 6x squared? Why, that would be 3x. 2x times what is a negative 14x? That would be negative 7, and so one factor is going to be 3x minus 7. Okay? And then what can I put over here to multiply times 3x minus 7? Well, 3x times... 3 is 9, and 3 times negative 7 is negative 21, and there you go. So one factor is 3x minus 7, and the other factor is just going to be 2x plus 3. Just like that. Done. Easy to, multi easy to uh, check your work. Just multiply these together. 2x times 3x, 6x squared. 2x times negative 7, negative 14x. 3 times 3x, 9x. 3 times negative 7, negative 21. It works. Let's do another one. I love these. Okay, we're going to do, let's do a big one. Let's do 20x squared minus 47x plus 24. Okay, this one's kind of a monster. Uh, well, let's see. My product is going to be 20 times 24, which is 480. My sum is going to be negative 47. Okay? So with a positive product and a negative sum, that means I'm looking for two negative numbers. All right. Well, let's go for it. Uh, 1 times 480, 2 times 240. Uh, 3 times 160, 4 times 120, oh my god, uh, 5 times uh, 96, uh, 6 times, hello, 6 times 80, I uh, can't do 7, 8 times 60, okay, I'm looking for two that 
add up to 47. Good Lord. Uh, 9, is 9 going to work? 9 is not going to work. 10 times 18, of course. Sorry, 10 times 48. Still not there. Uh, help me. Aha. 15 times 32. I cheated. But, uh, so use a calculator. Cheat yourself. 15 and 32. Uh, if I add negative 15 plus negative 32, I get negative 47. If I multiply negative 15 times negative 32, I get positive 480. So I'm going to change this to 20x squared minus 15x minus 32x plus 24. There we go. And now look at the first two terms. What can we factor out? 20 and 15, those are both multiples of 5. Let's take out a 5 x squared and x, those are both multiples of x. We're going to factor out a 5x then. 5x times what is 20x squared? Why, that would be 4x. 5x times what is negative 15x? I think that's a negative 3. So one of my factors is 4x minus 3. Good. 4x minus 3, I'm going to put it over here. What times 4x is negative 32x? I believe that is negative 8. So negative 8 times 4x is negative 32x, and negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. This last little piece here, negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24, if that doesn't work, there's a boo-boo somewhere and you got to go find it. But uh, fortunately, it does work. So what does that mean? It means my factors are 5x minus 8 times 4x minus 3, okay? And where'd the 5x minus 8 come from? It came from here and here. All right, last problem we're going to do, and that is... Uh, Let's do uh, 4x squared plus 31x equals 45, okay? Now, you'll notice this is not just a trinomial that we're factoring here. This is an equation. We want to find out what x is. So why am I doing an equation? Well, it's because that's kind of the so what behind factoring. Why do we care about factoring? Because it helps us solve equations like this. I look at this equation, and at first glance, I have no idea what x might be. What kind of x would make this work? Factoring will help me find that answer. So, step one, get everything on one side of the equation. So we're going to subtract 45 from both sides, and we'll get 4x squared plus 31x minus 45 equals 0. Okay? Factor. Uh, my product is going to be 4 times negative 45, which is my product is negative 180, and my sum is... 31. Okay, uh, 180. Uh, it's going to be 180 times 1, 90 times 2, 60 times 3, 45 times 4, 36 times 5. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ga. Got it. That's it. Okay? Because remember, this is a negative product, so one of these factors has to be negative. And if I use a positive 36 and a negative 5, that adds up to 31, and it multiplies together to be negative 180. So let's do that. 4x squared plus 36x minus 5x minus 45 equals 0. Okay? Take 4x plus 36x. Factor out what you can. Uh, 4 and 36, both multiples of 4. x squared and x, both multiples of x. 4x times what is 4x squared? x. 4x times what is 36x? 9. So 4x times x plus 9 is 4x squared plus 36x. Now let's do the other two. Uh, I know I also want x plus 9, and uh, negative 5 times x will be negative 5x, so I'm going to put a minus 5 there. And negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. Good. And remember, this still equals 0. So let's put this all together, and we get 4x minus 5 times x plus 9 equals zero. And what does that mean when you have factor times factor equals zero? What it means is one of these factors has to be zero. Just think about it for a second. You have two numbers, you're multiplying them together, and your product is zero. One of them's got to be zero. There's no way that that's going to happen if one of them's not zero. So either 4x minus 5 equals zero or x plus 9 equals zero. If x plus 9 equals 0, it's easy. You subtract 9 from both sides, you get x equals negative 9. Cool. There's one of our answers. If 4x minus 5 is 0, well, let's add 5 to both sides. We get 4x equals 5 
Then we can divide both sides by 4, and we get x equals 5 fourths, or I believe that's 1.25. So I'm going to say x is negative 9 or 1.25, and that is my answer. Take negative 9, substitute in for x here, and you'll find that, sure enough, you get 45. Take 1.25, substitute it for x, well, for both of those x's there, and sure enough, you'll see you get 45. All right. I hope this helped. I know it's fast. That's what the pause button is for, okay? But I hope this did help, and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.